Yo, what's going on guys? It is your boy Sassy here. Now one of the most important ways to actually understand text is to understand its intentions. In today's video, I want to give it a few different ways to actually give your text a purpose, which is actually something that people frequently overlook when they consider text because they only consider text as just text and not as text as a tool for typography. So for the first exploration, we're using text as a surface foundation. To replicate something like this, all you guys have to do is have your text layer ready, make a duplicate by alt dragging or control J, then make that duplicate a smart object. Control T to free transform. Now right click, flip vertical and line up the edges. Right click again, perspective. Take the right corner and drag it out towards the right. Finally, create a layer mask and use a black to white gradient tool, or if you guys are using color, color to white, to actually create the shadow, making sure that you line up the dark side of the gradient tool to the back side of the text. How this actually sets you up is using your actual text as a perspective wall or flooring, placing people or objects on the bottom half. However, additionally, you can take this and use it a few different ways. You can either take away the flooring to allow the text to become a more believable wall or taking away the back and allowing the flooring to stay to allow for a structure to sit behind it all. Do not be afraid to experiment with perspective and distortion when you right click to achieve walls, maybe on the left and right of a canvas or at a different vertical or horizontal perspective for flooring. So for expiration number two, we're using text as a shape to cradle subject matters where in this specific case where you apply the correct font choice and choose a vertical top font to place on the canvas, followed by a photo dead center on a square, it very quickly creates an awesome composition. So let's say you switch out the font for normal vertical height font and you duplicate it a bunch of times down the canvas, apply another square, tilt it because why not, then apply your photo and you've created another theory. Then let's say you place the very bottom text in front of the photo, you then created yet again another treatment. It's honestly very simple. It can either be as is, or it can be a really cool dope base where you can then later on, of course, throw some creative juices on it all. So now for expiration number three and our very last one, this is really the most popular one. It's actually using text as frames or another way to saying it, using type as texture. Let's say you have a really cool photo combined with a really simple composition that says everything you want it to say. Now, what that means is you have all this empty space in the left-hand side, right? However, this is where you actually want to use text to help frame everything and put it all together. Now, you might be asking me, well, what do I put there? And this is where I'm going to say info dump. I'm talking things like location, dates, coordinates, because why not, logos, or even like a really cool quote for the design itself. Like if it's a Nike campaign, you put like, just do it. However, with this, you can stylistically do a few different things. You can do single lines, double lines, decrease the space of the first two lines and make the third one a little bit longer. You can introduce a literal line if you don't have much to actually talk about. Maybe you include a stroke shape to hold the shape inside. Or lastly, some different weights to maybe provide context that maybe you want people to actually notice. Honestly, there's there's no limits. And what's crazy is it also doesn't have to even say in a line. It can even be texture you place on the actual photo itself, then later on on the canvas, later on the another side of the canvas. It honestly doesn't matter. Now, at the end of this video, what I'm actually hoping you guys actually take away from me is that you remember that the text tool is a tool. And what that tool is used for is typography, not always just a slap and go when everything in the design is done. Now, for the record, in this video, what we witness is me using two different styles of fonts. I use a sans serif font and a mono typeface. Now, including everything we just went over, the actual style and the design itself and typography overall changes even if you want to go for like an urban concept, use like a cool graffiti font, maybe like brick, like my font that I actually released like two weeks ago. It will actually create an entirely different design with just like changing the font. I honestly consider it a pretty special thing. Now, let's say the next time you actually go design surfing for references, which I might say, sensohq.com slash inspiration for all my previous mood boards for the past like 50 weeks for the record. However, you want to look at the design, right? And ask yourself, what do you believe the reasons that the artists are actually placing the text there is for. Now, of course, if you're wrong, you're actually right in a way, because what that means is that you took inspiration and applied it the way that you saw it. So like if we all looked at this mood board from an inspiration page, right, we will most likely all see something different that we want to try. And of course, will there be people that see the same thing? Absolutely. But will there also be different creative concepts that come out of this? Absolutely, freaking lootly as well. Either way, it's been your boy Sesso, Sesso HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later, much love, peace, Enjoy your day. And for the record, if you're at the end of this video and you watch normally, I try to talk normal in this video. You let me know how it goes. I don't know.